What's up, YouTube? It's the Action Figure Grader coming back to you with another Star Wars CGC comic book market update. And we all collect differently, and we all collect different grades. Not everybody collects 9.8 grades like I do, and that's okay. That's, that's, that's the great thing about having graded comics is that you have an idea, at least from somebody, what the condition of the book is, and you can vary what you pick up based on your budget. And I thought today, not for all of these books, but for some of them, we would take a look at the price difference between different grades of certain key issues. And the first one we're going to start with is Star Wars number one, where it all started, the 1977 iconic book. And this one has really jumped in price, obviously, over the last few years, just given the kind of resurgence in the Star Wars brand after The Mandalorian. And it's pretty interesting to see what this book has done over the last, let's say, three to five years. A 9.8 grade back in 2018 or 2019 might have set you back for less than a thousand bucks. Well, that's no longer the case now. And uh, so let's take a look at a 9.0. This was a 9.0 graded with the older style case. And uh, you can tell it's an older style case because it mentions what the condition of the pages are in the center of the book instead of below the grade. The newer, the newer grading cases have what kind of condition the pages are in below the grade. And they can be off-white, cream to off-white, off-white to white, or just white pages. And uh, obviously, the white pages are the most desirable. This one was cream to off-white, so kind of the third rung down, and it was a 9.0. It sold at auction for $363. So, you know, it, that's, a, that's a doable price. I'm not saying it's not, uh, you know, a, a small amount of money. Uh, it, it, you know, it can be considered a lot of money for some collectors. So, uh, But it's, it's a doable amount with some fiscal discipline, right? If you are, have a tight budget and you don't want to spend the money on a 9.8 grade, well, a 9.0 is really, really adequate and it, it you know, it, it's a nice addition to someone's collection. So $363 took that one home. Now let's move off to a 9.2 grade. And this one is off white to white. So this would be the second rung down in terms of the condition of the pages. And uh, with white pages being the best, obviously. So cream to off white is the third best. Off-white to white would be second best, and then white pages. But this is a 9.2, so a step up in grade as well. This one sold for $595. So that gives you an idea of the price difference between a 9.0 cream to off-white versus a 9.2 off-white to white. And then let's take a look at a 9.4 grade. So this is a 9.4 grade, so it's a step up in, in grade quality. And it's also white pages, so a step up in, in terms of the condition of the pages. So uh, just a, the next rung up on both measures, and this one sold for $650 plus $15 versus the 9.2 that was off white to white. And in my opinion, this 9.4 grade is a better buy, right? Because you're paying only $50 more, you're getting a bump up in grade, and you're getting a bump up in the page quality. So to me, I would pay the extra 50 bucks and get the 9.4 grade. Um before we dig into other comics, I wanted to also mention that a Star Wars 9.1 with white pages in a 9.8 grade can consistently go for over a $5,000 now. So that's a pretty crazy number, given that, let's call it three to five years ago, that same comic would run you under $1,000. So five times your money if you had picked up a 9.8 of Star Wars number one with white pages, you know, let's call that three to five years ago. Uh, so it's it's pretty amazing what the collecting community has done with Star Wars number one, especially after The Mandalorian aired in 2019. That really drove the price up for the very first comic book ever for Star Wars. Um, next, let's take a look at a, a really good deal. This was Star Wars number 41, white pages and a 9.8 grade. This is from 1980. And this is the continuing adaptation of The Empire Strikes Back. It's a great cover, one I definitely got on my target list. It shows the Falcon kind of navigating the asteroid field with the Imperial Star Destroyer in hot pursuit, just like in the movie. This is also the first cameo appearance of Yoda in comics. And this one was listed for $484 with free shipping. That is a great deal. It was best offer accepted as well. This book has really come back down off of the highs when Grogu was first becoming super popular. When Grogu was kind of first becoming mainstream with collectors, it brought everything Yoda up in price. And we've talked about that with vintage Kenner mint on card Yodas and what the prices have done there. And I, I really attribute it to Grogu's kind of uh, popularity. 
And but this book in particular has really come back down in price. It was it kind of hit a price peak of about six hundred to six fifty, but now it's around four fifty. Can can take that book home, and that's a nice book to have in your collection. Uh, here's a nine point four grade for Star Wars number forty two. This is obviously the first full comic book appearance, at least in U.S. comics, for Boba Fett and some of the other bounty hunters in cameo as well as the first full comic book appearance in U.S. comics of Yoda. It's a great book and clearly one of the top three vintage Kenner Star Wars, vintage Star Wars key issue comics to get. And this is in a 9.4 grade. It sold at auction on May 17th for $373. Um, and for comparison's sake, this book uh, in a 9.8 grade has been consistently selling recently for between $23 and $2,500 after reaching a peak of about $3,500 during the airing of the book of Boba Fett. So that one, is, that one as well has come back down a little bit, and uh, you can adjust your budget accordingly depending on which grade you want. A 9.6 grade would probably set you back closer to seven to $800, and then, as I mentioned, a 9.8 grade jumps all the way up to about $2,300. Uh, here was just a cool cover that I wanted to show you. It's not necessarily a key issue, but it's got a fantastic cover with Darth Vader, uh, and there's also a scene with the Falcon and a TIE Advanced over the start over the Death Star. So this is kind of harkens back to the adaptation of the earlier early issues from the Marvel run. But this is Star Wars number 52 from 1981. And uh, this one sold at auction for $141. Again, it's not necessarily a key issue, but I think it's such an iconic cover that I'd, I'd like to add this to my Darth Vader comic book cover appearance run at some point. And it's a pretty reasonable price and just one I, I thought I'd document. Um, again, going back to other grades, other than 9.8s, this is Star Wars number 68. This is the origin of Boba Fett, as well as the first mention in comics of the Mandalorians. This one, again, was a 9.6 grade and an off-white pages. And this one sold for $686 or 880 Canadian. Again, with white pages and a 9.8, you're, you're talking probably closer to $1,200 to $1,500. So you can, you can cut that number in half for a 9.6 grade with lower grade to the page quality. Um, finally, let's, let's, in terms of looking at different grades, let's take a look at uh, a, an issue that I have kind of on my radar, although I don't particularly like the cover all that much, and that's Star Wars number 107. This is the last issue in the original vintage Marvel run for comics. This one came out in 1986, and again, it's Star Wars number 107, and as it's labeled there on the CGC label, the last issue. And oftentimes you'll find that last issues have a lower print run because the popularity of whatever comic it is is kind of waning. So uh, if you can get it in a higher grade, it, it's a nice option to add to your collection because... Uh, there's just fewer of them out there. And so as a result, the C CGC census of that book will be at a lower grade. This one, again, was a 9.4 grade with white pages. That sold for $113 and change plus shipping. And then moving up to a 9.6 grade, it jumped all the way to $410 in terms of a closed listing for the exact same book. So that's a pretty dramatic price difference to go from a 9.4 with white white pages to a 9.6 um, all the way from 113 to 410 dollars, so you know a little over three and a half times your money. For a 9.8 grade with off-white to white pages, so a slight step down in terms of page quality, but a step up in terms of the overall grade of the book. That one sold for 500 dollars plus shipping. Um, another book that I really like that is worth considering is Star Wars Episode One: The Phantom Menace movie adaptation. This is the first cameo appearance of Darth Maul. And this is the more desirable cover that's kind of an artwork style cover. There is also a photo variant that I covered in a recent What to Buy video. Um, that one was in a 9.8 grade. That sold for $180. This is only a 9.6 grade, so it's stepped down in terms of grade, but still sold for $225 plus shipping. There's still one available. To me, this is a book, anytime you start talking about modern comics, anything post-Marvel run, the original Marvel run, I'd probably try to stick with 9.8 grades for the most part because the census of available books at a 9.8 grade is usually pretty large, and it's usually worth the price difference to get that 9.8 grade from an investment perspective. If you don't particularly care about the grade, then you know it's it's you know a good way to save money. But 
I think in terms of long-term collectability, you're better off going with a 9.8 grade with modern comics when possible, when your budget allows it. And, you know, in a 9.8 grade for this book, you're probably talking closer to $300. To me, anyway, it's worth the extra $75 or so to get the 9.8 grade with white pages. Um, again, going back to that comparison of different grades, I wanted to talk about Star Wars Clone Wars number one. There's been several sales at different grades. This one was an 8.0, and it sold for $540 on 12 bids. And then jumping up to a 9.4, you're going to be paying $910. And again, this is a case where I'd probably recommend you as as much as possible getting as close as you can to a 9.8 grade, only because even Star Wars Clone Wars number one, which obviously is the first comic book appearance of Captain Rex as well as Ahsoka Tano, there's like over 200, I think, for Clone Wars number one in a 9.8 grade. So the closer you can get to that, to the, to the extent your budget allows, the better. But a 9.4 grade is again sold for nine. Uh, it sold for $910. And then going to a 9.6 grade with white pages, that's just slightly below the best you can really get uh, for most collectors. A 9.6 sold for $1,500 and change, $1,580 to be exact, plus shipping. So, you know, again, for a 9.8 grade, that can set you back $2,500 or more. And here's an example of one that did sell at auction. This was a 9.8 grade. And that sold for $2,691. I have seen this book sell for sub $2,500, but $2,500 to $2,700 is kind of the going rate right now for Clone Wars number one. And I expect this book to creep back up in value the closer we get to the live action Ahsoka series. So again, in summary, an 8.0 sold for $540, a 9.4 sold for $910, a 9.6 sold for $1,580, and then a 9.8 sold for $26.91. So it's a, it's a pretty steep incline once you start getting closer to that 9.8 grade. Now let's talk about a few graded autographed comic books. And these action figure variants are often really popular with collectors to get signed at conventions. This is a 9.8 grade with Hayden Christensen signature on a John Tyler Christopher action figure variant. There's one still available, but one did sell for $449 and change plus shipping. Uh, here was a really interesting one that sold at auction. This is Bounty Hunters number 17, the Chris Sprouse 50th anniversary variant that shows Grand, the Grand Inquisitor along with Grand Admiral Thrawn signed by Timothy Zahn. And what's interesting is this book has been cut in half. One sold recently for over $330. This one sold for $165 and change plus shipping. So it's really come back down in price. And I don't know what I don't know what to attribute that to, given uh, that this is a really desirable modern book. It just came out in 2021, but it is signed by Timothy Zahn. But uh, maybe there was just a bidding war going on for that first one that sold for 365, I believe was the number. I don't quote me on that, but it's around there, uh, versus the 165 dollars that this one just sold for on May 19th. Uh, here was one that was a blank comic book cover that had a sketch done by a artist named uh, Nick Justice. He does a lot of sketch covers. So they take these blank covers and then they do a whole custom one of one painting. And this one is uh, of Grand Admiral Thrawn, but it's also signed by Timothy Zahn. So it's double signed by the cover artist as well as by Timothy Zahn. So very desirable one of one type of comic. That one sold for $338. I'm not in love with the, with the cover art, but that's what it sold for. And, you know, it's just a nice kind of one of one art piece almost uh, on the cover of a comic. Here is another Sprouse variant that was signed by Ian McDermott, who played the Emperor in the movies. And that one is also a 9.8 grade signature series. That one sold for $305. So clearly there's a, a big collector group that likes these signed comics that either have the original novel artists like Timothy Zahn or some of the actors like Hayden Christensen and Ian McDermott. Um, finally, we're going to round it off with High Republic Eye of the Storm number one. This is a book that I mentioned in previous videos. This is the origin story for Martian Rowe, the main villain within the High Republic universe. And his um, origin story starts with Eye of the Storm number one. This is the one in 25 or excuse me, this is the ratio variant, or excuse me, the variant edition. I'm going to show you the ratio edition in a second. But this one is a 9.8 grade and only sold for $49 plus $12 shipping. That's a steal of a deal. I expect this book to go up the closer we get to live action content for the High Republic universe. 
Here is the actual 1 in 25 ratio variant for the same book. This is called the Pe Pacheco variant cover. Again, this is the 1 in 25 ratio variant. I don't, I'm not really in love with this cover, but it shows Martian Rowe along with the swords being held from a point of view, first person point of view, by his army of Nihil. And, and that one sold for $90 plus $13.99 shipping. This one sold immediately. I expect this book to be to go down or this sale to go down as a very good deal. Um, this book could probably sell for as high as $125, depending on who's looking at it and, the, and what's going on with the High Republic universe. But this is one I've, I've, I've targeted. I'm, I'm just not really that in love with the cover. I, I tend to prefer this cover variation along with the other cover A that shows Martian Row on top of a cliff. Those are my favorite covers in terms of aesthetics, but in terms of rarity, obviously this one's going to be a little bit more desirable since it's a 1 in 25 ratio variant. That's all I really had for this video. I hope you enjoyed taking a look at some of the different grades out there, along with the price differences for different CGC comic books. Thanks again, and I'll be back soon.